Hey everyone, this is Tara with the Painted Cicada. How are you? I am just getting ready for my demo this evening. I have got um, a fun watercolor demo scheduled and uh, this is one that I really enjoy doing uh, every year around this time, right before the leaves start changing. I like to go out oops, and snag some different leaves so that I have a variety to play with. Um, that was probably the notification that I'm going live. Uh, if you want to create along with me today, uh, all you need is watercolor. It does not matter which kind um, or any uh, liquid medium would work. Um, I've got some water here on my desk. I've got some paint brushes. All I really need for this is a medium size round. Uh, I have a palette to put my watercolor on. Um, if you do not have watercolor, you, this can also be done with fluid acrylic. Um, that is a liquid acrylic that comes in a little bottle. Uh, you could also use India inks if you have those. Um, I'm going to use my liquid watercolor, which comes in a bottle, but if you have a palette of watercolor um, or tubes, that is fine as well. Uh, if you're here tonight, feel free to say hello. I'd like to know who's, who's watching, and if you decide to create along with me, um, please share that so I can see your beautiful creations. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is just get an assortment of fall colors. Um, so I've got some red, some orange, um, yellow, and green. And then I have got watercolor paper. Using watercolor paper is super important when you have watercolor. Um, hi, Cindy. Thanks for joining. Um, it is, uh, if you're using watercolor and you don't have watercolor paper, it's just not going to behave uh, in the same way. Um, I love Canson XL. I use that fairly often. Um, and what I'm going to do is just cut a little piece off. I hate wasting it, so I'm going to use every little bit. All right. Um, All right, the first demo, or the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is the, the way I typically do this, is I will um, start with the yellow because yellow blends um, much easier. And I am going to choose a leaf. And uh, I like to do this before the leaves get crunchy. So I've got some nice green leaves. They're just more flexible. I don't have to worry about them breaking. Um, so let me pick a nice, big one here. All right. And what I am going to do is just get a little bit of this. Actually, you know what? I usually use yellow, but I want it to show up on camera really well. So I'll start out with green. So I'm going to get some of this green watercolor and I am just going to kind of apply it to this leaf and I'm going to use this as a stamp. And I don't need to go crazy with it, but I do want to get some of these main veins. Um, also, if you don't have watercolor, Crayola washable markers are kind of fun to use for this as well. All right, so I am spreading this ink around. So I just get a little coat. And it doesn't have to be completely covered, but what this is going to do, I'm going to use this like a stamp, and it's really going to help me get the shape of this leaf. So I'm going to cut the stem off, and then I can take this leaf and just stamp it on. There, and that's going to give me the general shape of this leaf. And so that's there. I'm going to let that sit for a second and I'm going to get um, all of my watercolors on my palette. A little bit of each color. I don't do a lot of color mixing because these colors will mix together themselves. So, let's see. Uh, 
All right, so now that I've got these ready, I am just gonna go in with a clean paintbrush. Hi, Linda from Texas, how are you? You've probably got a lot more summer left up here in Ohio. We've only got about a month before things turn cold, so I am in the fall mood. All right, so I made a stamp here. Uh, with the back of my leaf and what I'm going to do is take some water and I want to uh, wet the inside shape of this leaf and I don't have to do it exactly you know like my leaf was shaped and this green is going to lift a little I don't care about that I just want to fill in this entire shape with water because we are going to do a really fun wet on wet technique so I'm just following the shape of the leaf. I don't get the complete stamp. It's not perfect and I'm okay with that. This is just for fun. And so typically I, I use yellow, but I wanted you to be able to see it on camera, but really it doesn't matter. Using green is fine. Um, because actually leaves start as green, so I'm okay if this green blends into all the other colors. And this just helps us with the shape. You can totally just draw in a shape with water if you want to. You don't really even have to do the stamp technique. All right, so now that I've got this nice and wet, and this goes really fast. I don't have to think too much. I'm just going to go back over some of these early sections, make sure that's still wet. Um, now I'm just going to go back and tap in color. And I'm going to let this move and blend in that wetness. Watercolor stays where the paper is wet, so I don't have to worry too much about it blending out of the shape. I can just put that in there. So I'm going to do a lot of green on this one since I started with green. And then I can start tapping in other colors and they are going to move and blend in those wet spots. And the beauty of this is you really can play and just have fun. And it moves and spreads and does all kinds of fun things all by itself. And I like to add a little bit of each color um, just because I really like when the leaves change. I don't have a very good orange here. Let's see if I can get a, an orangier orange. And if some of these colors mix and turn brown, that's okay, because eventually these leaves get to brown, right? So um, this is the fun part, is just moving color around and playing. And this is a really fun one to do with kids, too. So if you have kids and grandkids, they love doing stuff like this. And once I have the colors on there, uh, you can decide, really, whether you want to move things around. I like to blend out the red a little bit. It's um, kind of one of those brighter, starker colors. So I'm going to encourage that to blend out just so it's not so jarring over there on that side. And then once you get the colors where you like them, um, sometimes leaves have fun little spots and marks. I like to go in just with uh, some clean water and tap in some dots. And this might be difficult to see on camera. Let me see if I can adjust it. I'll put one here in the red and you'll see once you tap with clean water, it pushes that color away. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but leaves just sometimes have these funny little dots and marks. 
So I like to add some of those on there. You know, maybe there's spots where bugs have hatched or eaten away at the leaf. But playing with wet watercolor is super fun. All right, so I am going to just set this aside to dry before I do any of the vein work on there. Um, and I'm going to show you another way to do the exact same thing. Uh, this time I'm going to use archival ink. So uh, with this first lesson or with this first part of the demo, I just used watercolor. I didn't use anything else. With this, I'm going to stamp my leaf with some archival ink first and what that's going to do this is waterproof so once this dries it's not going to lift and move and uh, all these veins are going to stay on there and black so i always trim off the stem and i've got a variety of leaf shapes none of these other ones fit on here do they um, maybe i'll do this one And then I can just tap right on here, just press my leaf onto the ink pad. And for this to work, it does need to be archival. So you don't want to use an ink that will lift with the water because once we put the water on there, uh, you're going to have a mess. All right, but I think I've got most of this fairly inked up. All right, and so that gives me kind of some dark um, veining, and now I can accent that with my watercolor. So I'm going to mute for just a moment, um, and I'm going to zap this with my heat gun just to make sure that this is dry and does not lift. All right, so again, I can do that really quickly. It doesn't need a, a whole lot of drying. Uh, and what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to fill this shape in with some plain water and what should I do with my leaf? Here's my leaf. Um, I can adjust the shape of this leaf as well. So you just need plain water. I'm using a little bit of green so you can see what I'm up to. And then I'm going to fill in this entire shape with just water. You see green because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. So again, filling this entire shape with water. So we want to do wet on wet, the same technique we did before. We're just going to get a little slightly different look since we are going to have some inking on there. This leaf has a really fun undulating shape. Okay, so now this is nice and wet with water and I can tap in colors. So the first color I'm going to tap in is green. Since most leaves start out as green, I like to use that as my base. But of course, if you want leaves that turn more color, you can switch that up. Um, so I've got the green on there and now I'm going to start adding in other colors. So tap in a little orange. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm just kind of having a good time here. Switch into some yellow. And the real key here is just to play with colors that blend nicely together. Um, so if you pick, you know, a fall leaf palette, you should be fairly good because all of these are gonna, gonna play well together. So for this one, I'm probably going to cover up most of that green. But if we get spots of green here and there, that's okay. The 
this leaf has such a fun like undulating shape. All right, so again, I'm gonna set this one aside and finish it in just a moment. I need all of that water to dry. Um, certainly, if you're making these at home, you can use a heat gun or um, a hair dryer to assist. I like to let them dry naturally because the watercolors kind of do their own thing. All right, I'm gonna pull this one back. It looks like it's still wet, so maybe I'll do a number three. Um, let me find. Let's do a really, oops. I'm going to do a large one. I'm going to pull up my largest leaf just to play while these two are drying. And so I'll use this one. When I gathered this one, I, I called it my dinosaur foot. So this is a nice dinosaur foot leaf. I don't know my trees. I don't know leaves and trees and um, species and all that. All right, so let's see for this one. Maybe I will start with brown. Uh, so I'm going to cover this leaf with brown watercolor on the veiny side up. Remember, this part is just to kind of get a stamp to get an idea of the shape of these leaves. So I just apply my watercolor. Flip it over. I can just pat it down, lift it up. And that gives me just some nice shape and definition. And then the first step here is to, again, fill this entire shape with water. I like this color. This is a nice golden brown which is perfect for leaves. I love it. All right, now remember, I'm going to come back later and I'm going to add some of the veining and all the fun details. Right now, we're just playing with water um, and watercolor. So I'm getting this nice and wet. And then I can tap in some more color. And I haven't really used a lot of brown. So I'm just going to tap in some brown and let this, this leaf is going to be an older leaf. So this one is already changing. Maybe I'll keep this one a little splotchier. Maybe there's still a little green left. So instead of moving my brush and moving the color around, I'm doing a lot of tapping with this one. And so that's going to keep a lot of this color focused and it's going to have more of a blotchy, splotchy appearance. I did learn um, several years ago that the color 
of that the leaves change has everything to do with how much food they've saved up throughout the year. So if they have more food, they will be different colors than if they produce less food for the tree. So sometimes you may get different color falls, just depending on what your trees decide they want to store up that year. The idea here is just a lot of play. That's what makes this leaf demo so fun is you can really just play and blend these colors. I should have watered that brown down. I got a different brown out and it's very dark. So. so I definitely needed to spread that out. That was very dark. I'm okay with that because I wanted this one to be mostly brown anyway. So I like to just, I don't know, add splotches, add dots. You know, like I did earlier to the other leaf, you can... Oh, hi Lynn from Florida! You know, I would absolutely miss the fall too, but... Having beaches within driving distance is definitely a bonus. There's pros and cons to everywhere, you know? If you're up north here and you have all the, the beautiful fall weather, you miss the ocean. <laughs> so I'm just tapping in some water. I'm going to move some of this color around. That didn't blend very well. Keep in mind, everybody, there's no right or wrong. We're just making leaves, blending colors, having a good time. Um, so, I'm going to tap in some of this green. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside and let's see if my, I think this first leaf is probably okay to go back to. Um, so I'll show you how I add uh, the veining on this one. Uh, this one I'm going to do with a micron pen. Um, they're all just different looks, uh, but there is no correct way to do this. So you can, you know, play with options, play with what you have at home. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get a nice thin brush, and I'm going to dip into my brown. So you could do this with brown or green, really any of these colors. And I'm going to add in those middle veins. So I'm going to tap right here at the base. This is where my stem was. So I'm going to make a little dot there so I know where I'm going. And then with a nice uh, thin, thin brush, the thinnest brush you have, I'm just going to go uh, just below the tip of that leaf into that point. And this is called wet on dry. So the watercolor is wet, but the leaf and all these fancy colors inside are dry. So this should not be blending out. If you do find that it blends out, it's too wet. So I just add the main veins of the leaf. So however many uh, you know pieces poke out of that leaf. That's how many you need. They kind of branch out there. And then I'm going to come through and just add some additional lines. I'm not going to add every line that I see on the leaf. I'm just giving the impression that yes, there's, there's veins and texture and all kinds of stuff going on here. Sorry if you guys keep hearing me sniffling. I've definitely got the sniffles. Have a good night, Linda. Thank you for joining. 
All right, and what I'm gonna do for the stem that comes out is, so I'm gonna get a nice thin brown or a light brown, and I'm just gonna draw in the stem. Now the stem is going to get thicker at the end, so I'm gonna go lighter up at the top, and then I'm gonna push down my brush at the bottom. And that just gives it kind of a, a thicker end there. And then just to give it a little depth, I'm going to go either with a darker brown or, you know, a less thinned out brown. And I'm going to go down one side of this with that brown and kind of keep one side darker than the other. Just like it was shadowed. And this is wet, so it's going to blend out a little bit, and that's fine. And that's it for the leaf. So it's real easy to do. I'm going to let that one dry. And then I said I was going to do this one with a micron pen. So this is the leaf that I stamped um, on archival ink. And I stamped on here before I got started. So it's got kind of that um, grungy look, which I really like. And you can do this with a Sharpie. Um, you can do this with a micron pen. Oops, not a pink one. Um, just any thin, thin pen will do. And then what I'm going to do is just finish up. Oops, that Sharpie is about dead. I'm just going to sketch in the bottom of this leaf here, this stem, maybe give it a little notch at the bottom. And then you can come through and just thicken up some of these lines if you want to. You can also just leave it kind of how it is. But you can darken anything else. But I like to add in that stem and just give it kind of more of a finished look. And that's really all you have to do. If you wanted to outline it, you could. Um, I kind of like it simple like this. Thank you, Cindy. Let me see. Um, another thing you can do, so if you like to outline things, but you don't like to be real um, controlled and perfect. Another way you can do it is just kind of create a double or triple outline. So I'm, I've am i got my black Sharpie here and I'm going to go around the outline, but I'm going to do it a few different times and I'm going to keep my options kind of squiggly. So I don't want this to match up. I don't want it to be perfect. So if you like a more a loose look, you can outline it like that. You can always add a, a word. So, you know, you can turn this into a card. Maybe you want to write happy fall. Um, this watercolor uh, technique is super easy. And so it's fun to kind of see what you can turn it into. Of course, I'm kind of zipping through this, but um, yes, Lynn, get your watercolors out and play. Watercolors are so playful. Um, I am definitely, um, I value realistic art and, you know, people who can do those hyper-realistic paintings and watercolor and acrylic, uh, but I really like to play and have things kind of free and loose as well. And watercolor can do that. I love the wet on wet. Um, all right, so these were my two first samples. So this I just did the vein in a brown watercolor. This I used that black to kind of highlight. I'm going to set this to the side. Uh, my dinosaur footprint leaf here is still wet, so I'm going to set him to the side. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do, so I'm going to show you, okay, the watercolors I used first are these Dr. P.H. Martin's liquid watercolor. Um, and these are great color fast, um, concentrated watercolor, and I love them. Dr. P.H. Martin's also has uh, another type of watercolor called Hydrus. And the Hydrus is super bright. These colors are very saturated. Um, and the Hydrus works more like an ink. So it's kind of a nice combo between watercolor and India ink. Um, it's semi-permanent, so it still will lift a little bit like watercolor. It blends like watercolor, um, but it definitely has some staining quality to it. Um, 
So I'm going to do one more leaf press. I'll do a smaller one. Um, and I'm going to use the hydrus just to show you the difference in the vibrancy. And um, so these Dr. P.H. Martins are really vibrant, but these just blow everything out of the water. They are super bright. Um, so I'm just going to demo those just to show you. I like to show different art supplies because I am an art supply junkie. All right, so I'm going to use this leaf here. And then maybe I will use this red. I'm going to get all my colors out. Let's see if I can keep track of which ones are which. There's my orange. I hardly ever get these out and play, so these are, I'm excited to play with these. I'm running out of places to put them, right? There's my yellow. All right, so first step, let's get this leaf stamped. So, um, I'll use this green. All right, there is my green stamp. And I'm just going to blend this out, fix this shape, clean water. And I can already see a difference because a lot of the uh, leaf print that I made is still stained on there. So these just behave very, very differently. All right, this is kind of a yellow orange. So I'm gonna put some of that in. It's already mixing with my red. So I guess we're gonna have a more vibrant leaf here. So you can already see, let me get these both in good light, the comparison of these colors, um, they're both vibrant, but this uh, is just, even to the eye, um, is exceptionally more vibrant um, when it dries. So you might even be able to see some of this. I'm going to drop some water spots in here. I just like this one. I like when it moves and plays and makes fun designs. And just add in some from the bottle because I don't like the way that <laughs> didn't blend out. So 
Yes, lots of fun. And this is, like I said, this is not a realistic uh, type of lesson. I'm having fun. I'm letting the shape of, shape of the leaf and the movement of the watercolor determine what happens here. Um, so I'm going to set the, that one aside. Let's see, I finished this one. I might have to zap this guy. He's still a little wet, but I need to put my my details on him. So let me mute for just a second so you don't have to hear this goofy hair dryer. All right, so this baby is almost completely dry. Uh, this leaf is still wet, and actually, since it's still wet, I'm going to show you kind of a fun salt technique. So for those of you who um, like to do watercolor and you know the salt technique, I'm just going to add some splotches of salt on here, and while it dries, it's going to create some fun, uh, fun little texture on there. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. So while that's drying, I am going to get my paintbrush. And then I'm going to go right into this brown and just kind of draw in some of these lines. And the fun thing about using real leaves is you can always pull them back out uh, and refer to them. So you can see, you know, kind of where these veins start and stop and the direction that they go. This is definitely going to help this look a little more like a leaf and less like a dinosaur foot. You can add as many or as few as you want. You can also come through, you know, if you want to, to uh, clean up the edges, feel free now that this is dry. Um, once your work is dry, these watercolors are going to stay firm. So if you like a nice clean outline, you can always add that. If you don't like any of these color blends, you can always maybe add and mix some more on top. All right, so I am almost done. So here are my first three. I'm move this stuff out of the way. All right, now this last one here, um, I am going to zap with my dryer again, just to speed things along. So you're, so we're not literally watching paint dry, but this will just take a second.
All right, so this baby's like 90% dry. Um, but the little salt crystals that I put on there um, are dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my garbage can and just brush it off. Um, you don't want to do that while it's wet. All right, so what you're going to see is that salt absorbed some of that watercolor and kind of made these fun little color splotches. Uh, I really like that technique. Um, and I don't know if it's showing up on camera, just barely, but to the eye, I can really see it. So I see, um, remember I said these hydrous inks are, or hydrous watercolor, um, do stain. So unlike traditional watercolor that lifts, this will leave kind of an inky stain. Um, so it does leave that outline that we had, uh, from the stamp of the leaf, which is kind of fun. Um, so had I done that in, you know, maybe a dark red or something, I wouldn't even have to add details. The maple leaf is my favorite too. I think the shape is just really appealing. I like that. I don't know what the rest of these are um, as far as leaves. I just kind of went randomly leaf picking. <laughs> so, um, so again, I'm just going to take my brush, my thin brush, and I'm going to, oops, where is my thin brush? I don't know where it went. That's okay. Um, so maybe I'll do some of the veins in red just for a little, you know, change. Um, of course the leaves or the veins on this leaf probably would not naturally be red, but again, I'm just playing. I'm just kind of having a good old time over here. And so this is just a real fun way to play. You can make cards, you can make framed art, whatever you want to do. But it's a good um, way to, to just get to know your watercolor. You know, I think a lot of um, working with watercolor is just understanding its behavior and those little quirky things that it does. All right, so that is in friends. These are my leaves. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Those of you stuck with me to the end, this was kind of a long demo. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I hope you're inspired to go snag some leaves. Uh, whether you're in an autumn area or not, you can always, uh, you know, use the leaves you have. Uh, they work better when they're green because they're nice and flexible and they're not crunchy. Um, so you can just paint on them and stamp. You can do this really with any uh, fluid medium. Um, you can even use Crayola markers. So uh, experiment, play, and definitely share with me. I absolutely love to see what people make. You can find me on all the social medias at Painted Cicada. So if you share a picture online, you can tag me. Um, or you can join my group, um, which is called the Painted Cicadas Art and Share. Uh, the address is there on the video. It's facebook.com slash groups slash painted cicada group um, and we've got lots of fun stuff going on in there so have a great day everybody and i will see you for my next demo i hope you can make it can't wait to see your leaves Bye bye